Hello and welcome back to another League of Legends video. Today's video is going to teach you how to carry using a ranged top laner. Ranged top laners are one of the easiest ways to snowball and carry your games because they are ranged. They have more harass and they have more trade potential early versus melees and they scale super well into the late game. It really is an amazing win-win situation but I'm also going to teach you exactly what you need to learn to make it work and to not fall behind because yes, while meanwhile it is the easiest thing in the world to possibly carry with, a lot of people don't do it because they don't know how to do it and end up falling behind and becoming very useless to their team. Topics being covered today will be as follows on text. Make sure to keep your eyes on the screen for any additional info I might put on there. For the early game, you'll be learning spacing, kiting, and CSing. Then at number two, you'll be learning harassing, trading, matchup, cooldowns. Three, jungle awareness and warding. And then into the mid game, we'll learn how to rotate, what to rotate to, when to rotate. Secondly, you'll learn when to farm, group. Third, you'll learn how to team fight effectively. Fourth, you'll learn how to close out your games. Make Make sure you guys stick around if you guys want to learn how to climb with a ranged top laner. It's super effective, super easy, as long as you do it right and you can kite effectively. Alright, let's get right into the video. First off, let's start with spacing. Spacing is an essential part of League of Legends and you should be using this technique every game, every laning phase versus every champion. Everyone does it, whether they know it or not. Unless of course they don't. Spacing pretty much is just the area of influence that the enemy champion has against you. So GP doesn't have any ranged and I have a bunch of range in my auto attacks. Therefore I beat GP in this matchup as for spacing. GP really needs to be able to watch uh, where I'm going. And right here you can see GP is not doing anything. He's not spacing well enough. He's not keeping his distance between me. Therefore I can chunk him for half HP. I do have to be mindful when it comes to spacing of GP's barrels and spacing when I aggro GP because GP can actually do a lot of damage to me if I don't pay attention to his minions I'm gonna take a lot of minion aggro just cause when I auto GP the minions are gonna auto me back therefore it's gonna sort of balance it out so you gotta be really be really careful when you're playing like a, a harass lane like this see how I threw down a ward early that way I can see the enemy jungle when the enemy jungle is coming. Also another thing, I know if I can just dodge Olaf's Q, I'll be in no danger. Unfortunately, I'm unable to dodge Olaf's Q, so I have to flash over the wall. But I did see him early because of the ward, so that was super helpful. Coming back into the lane, I got my control ward. Super important that you guys get a control ward, especially because you're so squishy, you're ranged. And most, of all, most important of all, I burn my flash. So therefore, you already know that Olaf is going to repeat gank. It's a super typical thing for junglers to repeat gank, especially after they've blown a summoner. Knowing Olaf and GP going to this range matchup, GP is most likely going to be very frustrated and wanting help from Olaf. Not only that, but your chances of killing somebody without their summoners is extremely high, so a repeat gank is very obvious. Aside from spacing, kiting, and CSing, some of the more important things when you're playing a ranged top laner is for you to know the enemy champion's abilities. So if you don't know the enemy champion's abilities, it's going to be really hard for you to outplay them. The number one thing I need to look out for the most right now versus GP is his double barrel combo. I should also stay wary of the bushes for the ghost barrel combos. You can put a barrel in the in the one of the bushes and then put a barrel in the lane and shoot me that way as well. A little bit harder to do. It's not extremely hard to do, but just a little bit. And as you'll start to notice, if you're watching the, the video, every time GP has his uh, barrel down, I'm always prepared for his double barrel combo. So I position that way. I also have my Q to dodge his double barrel combo. I'm currently just trying to thin out the wave right now. That way it doesn't crash under turret and I can see S easier. But aside from thinning out the wave and wave management, if you guys are noticing it, Every time I can harass GP, every time he goes for a minion, I'm always looking to trade. Every time he lays down a barrel and misses, I'm looking to trade. Um, every time he presses Q on the minion, I'm looking to trade. Unfortunately, I end up eating a huge uh, double barrel combo to the face, and that's exactly what you guys need to look out for in this matchup. A couple of those, and I could be dead like instantly. One of those combos half HP me. 
Imagine what would happen if I got hit with that combo while Olaf was walking towards me. Just instant one shot. Combine that with GP's ultimate. That would be pretty difficult to get away with as Vayne. Especially with no flesh. You can see the GP barrel, uh, ghost barrel combo right here. He's trying to ghost barrel, but unfortunately for him, I can see his barrel. He probably misplaced it. Here's he setting up for another double barrel combo. I see Olaf with a control ward. See how 75 gold helps me save my life. 75 gold, guys. That's all it takes for you to live sometimes. 75 gold for me to know exactly where Olaf is and to save my own skin. So I rush Berserker Greaves for a few reasons. I can dodge abilities faster, move faster with the movement speed, and attack faster for only 1100 gold, which is pretty insane to be honest with you. Rushing tier 2 boots can actually be a pretty good thing depending on your matchup. Say for example if he had to dodge a stun or something. The biggest reason why I rush it is for movement speed and attack speed, but mainly the movement speed helps with GP's barrels and Olaf's Q's. Very obvious to tell that Olaf was ganking right there because GP walked up and ulted. So I engaged way too soon. See how the movement speed boots help just enough. If I hadn't used Q, like Olaf did a good gank because Olaf waited for me to Q and then he came in. I Q'd forward and then he came in. So I kind of greeted, but if I didn't greed, um, I definitely would have gotten the double kill and gone away with it. Or just the solo kill if GP didn't decide to dive me. But 2 for 1 works for me, um, I'm a late game champion, I scale super hard, GP does as well, but I'm confident in my gameplay. And that's how you should be when you're playing in, in ADC, range ADC. If you're not confident in your gameplay, um, don't do this, don't try out the strat. You need to be confident in your skills, you need to know that you can 1v5. Of course you don't always have to 1v5, but it's nice to know that you can. The biggest downfall to this tactic, to this strat, is if you fail, if you ain't your top laner, you're going to be up against such a strong, insanely strong, unstoppable GP, unstoppable Darius, Alawi, or Mordekaiser, Garen, anybody who can stomp your entire team. If you fail, you ain't your lane, um, it's pretty much over, so that's why I recommend you Getting good in the bot lane first before trying anything um, in the top lane or the mid lane. And also when you do that, you also have a support that helps keep you alive, helps keep you engaged and gets you kills. So that kind of helps you. Um, but do learn the essentials before you do try out this strat. Uh, don't just go and auto lock an ADC top because then you'll feed, you'll int, and then uh, you'll make it hard for people to carry you. And it's definitely okay to feed an int. Um, if you're learning, you know, as long as you're actually learning, uh, just don't autopilot when doing this because uh, you have to use a lot of game knowledge, actively know where the jungler is, um, actively know how to play your matchup and how to win the game and how to close the game. Because when you play a ranged top laner, one thing you're going to lack, like how, what we're lacking right now, is you might lack CC and you also might lack a tank so those are the two biggest things that we lack right now we have a ton of CC but we don't have a tank this game so um, that's the biggest thing if you don't know how to carry from the from the top lane as a range and you don't know your champions mechanics items itemization builds um, and how to play them in team fights it's gonna be extremely hard for you to uh, carry the game and just because you guys are missing one tank Beautiful gang from the young Echo Main. Unfortunately, I failed my condemn. But to be 100% honest with you guys, it's really not that hard. Once you guys get good at it, you know, just work on your early game, work on your mid game, work on your cutting, work on your CSing. Once you get those three to four things down, you're good, like legit. Early game is the hardest part of the game. Like if you win your early game, and you snowball off your early game, the mid game and the late game becomes so much easier so much easier and to prove it to you guys how easy it is guys my 13 year old brother is a top lane main and he mains lucian top Callista top vein top just these range champions super cheesy super e easy to play um i mean i wouldn't say lucian and Callista is easy but the strat itself is very easy um and he does spectacular with it um 
it works great for him and i know if you guys just try out this strat give it a little bit of time feed a few games um you guys will ultimately come out to appreciate it um, that this is easier than most matchups just because of the cheese the nature in itself beautiful ultimate from the echo unfortunately he doesn't make it we do get a free kill and huge shutdown gold on the Olaf though, so that's actually huge. Got a couple kills in. My CS isn't the best. It's actually a little bit lower than what it usually is. But you can see Ash walking up top lane. Ash actually calls for a lane switch. Um, I'm pressing tab to check out all the different scores, KDAs, where everyone's at, that sort of stuff. Surprisingly, bot lane won already. Ash wanted to swap. Um, I guess Nami didn't get the memo, so Nami didn't swap. Anyways, I'm gonna go lane with Nami, and um, Ash is gonna take care of GP just because she's fed. Generically, Ash and Nami are both supposed to go top, and you're supposed to rotate bot. That way, Ash can take top, and I can just kind of sustain bot versus the enemy two top laners. Um, also, I can try to 1v2 as well, uh, but Ash just decides to go top by herself and Nami doesn't follow. So that's fine, that's what it is. Uh, I'm fine with the support down here too, sharing EXP. But generally, I'm supposed to be at this a stage of the game, I'm supposed to be two levels ahead of the bot laners, and should be strong enough to hold them, hold the two of them off by my own, especially if um, bot lane won. So we're getting to the mid game. The mid game generally starts as soon as the first turret falls. People start rotating. People start roaming to other lanes. Um, if generally people don't ping MIA, they get ganked by somebody. Your ally laner is going to get very mad, or the enemy laner is going to get very mad. Um, a lot of things happen during the mid game. Um, it's this when things start to get spicy. People start to get into 2v3 skirmishes, 5v1 skirmishes. Uh, 5v5s um, it's different every game depending on all the champions and what everyone does fortunately for us GP's greeting super hard and we net a triple kill because of that not a triple a double but a triple in general but you can see from GP's frustration he's very very far behind um, trying his best to get ahead snowball carry his team but it's not gonna happen he didn't play aggressive enough in the early game versus Vayne. Uh, definitely could have played better as GP. Anyways, let's get back to the video. So how to rotate. There's a few scenarios um, that could be played differently. So say if I if I want if I beat my laner and I took my top lane, I could typically get three plates, three platings, and then get Rift Herald and then take turret. Or I can beat my laner, take turret, and then get Rift Herald, go mid or go bot with Rift Herald, and then let Rift Herald go. But generally, uh, that's how it works when you're top lane. If you're bot lane, if you're playing ADC or support, or if you're playing mid lane, mid lane can prioritize Rift or Dragon, um, but mainly Dragon. And then um, bot laners and supports usually take Dragon. So. If, Kill your laner, take your bot lane turret, and then take dragon, or kill your laner, and then take dragon, or kill your laner, take turret, and then take dragon, or take your turret, and then rotate mid. So there's just so many endless possibilities, but that's pretty much what it is. Um, it's pretty much the same for every lane. Top lane, uh, kill your laner, starve your laner, and then take rift, or take advantage of uh, whatever objective there is to be taken advantage of, whether that be the enemy blue buff, enemy red buff, Rift Hero, Dragon, or turrets, or even just Scuttle Crabs. If you're strong, you want to push your lead in every way you can, just as we're doing right here. You can also decide which turret you want to take next by pressing tab and seeing which of your ally is strongest, or which of your enemies is weakest, um, and whichever one would be easiest for you to take advantage of. of. Um, in this case, Ash rotated top, um, we took mid, took advantage of Heimerdinger, uh, cause Diana's pretty strong, and Heimerdinger was pushed, his turret was gone, so it was an easy kill. Because of that, we were able to take a, take down a tier 2 turret and, um, chunk out the inhib turret pretty good. 
What I find myself doing most often sometimes, if I don't win lane hard enough, or if I do win lane and uh, the others just win one lane a lot harder, um, it generally gets a little bit confusing and everybody just groups up mid and A rams mid. Um, the easiest way to explain this so you guys get it is the lawnmower effect. So say you take your top lane turret and the enemy mid and bot are still available. Um, you can take the mid turret or the bot turret, whichever one is easiest to take advantage of. And then you can rotate and take the next one if you can't take the tier 2 turret. Um, sometimes there are those tough games where the game is so evenly matched um, that it just makes things hard. So what will end up happening is the team with the better champions will end up winning and taking turrets and objectives because the team with better players just are unsure of what to do during the mid game. At least the better players in the early game, the laning phase, start to get confused around the mid game because they don't know what to do during the mid game phase. So according to the Lamor effect, you take all the tier 1 turrets first and then you take all the tier 2 turrets and then after that you take the inhib turrets. So. Pretty much that's how the lawnmower effect works. You're looking at the map right now, all right? We got the tier one, tier two, mid turret down, tier one, bot turret down. So what do we do next um, according to the bot turret? Things are starting to stall out a little bit. Very fed ass just died. What do you think should happen? Uh, looking at the map, according to the lawnmower effect, the easiest next turret to take down is gonna be the first tier top turret. And that's um, what we're going for. Push GP out of lane, I should be able to take this. GP is ultimate, Olaf is here so I can't take the turret. This is one of the reasons why I say that you should be able to be confident in your damage. Be confident in what you do because it's super cheesy, the strategy is super cheesy. But at the same time, it's not so cheesy, it's kind of hard. It could be, it can be, it can be hard because you're taking a very squishy ADC and you don't have the support to protect you and you have to pretty much protect yourself by kiting. So you no longer have that support, that tank or that engage to help you get kills. That's why I say it's a little bit harder, the strategy. But it's super cheesy because once you get the snowball effect going on, it's really, really hard to stop you. You can see I'm already 7-1 and really hard to stop. I'm going to back from my Rage Blade soon, and that's going to be game. So we're starting to get into that mid-game, late-game part of the game. And this is one of the most confusing parts of the game. This is why I say if you autopilot, this is the part where you kind of just auto-lose or auto-win. You can just kind of coin tossing at this point if you don't really know what's going on. So, here's how you figure out what's go what to here is how you figure out what is going on at this stage in the game and what you need to do to execute it. Whenever your team is not grouped up, you're always looking for favorable favorable fights in numbers. So, whenever your team is not grouped up, you just farm, try to farm, get vision, um, and as an ADC or as a squishy, you always want to group up. So here I got vision at Baron. We find them at Baron. And I start engaging. But I don't 100% engage. I'm zoning. And I'm waiting for my team to get here. And as soon as my team gets here, we go in. And that would have never happened if I autopilot, if I never warded Baron. And that's pretty much game. Diana gets... An amazing triple kill in. We get a quadra kill. Echo's pushing pot. We get Baron. And that's pretty much it. So, to make it simple for you, when do you farm? When do you group? You farm when your team is dead, when you don't have a numbers advantage. You group. And you try to make, you try to get a 5v4, a 5v3, a 4v3, 4v2, trying to get the numbers advantage. Always trying to have the advantage at this point. How to team fight effectively? It's a hard question to answer in one video. I'm going to say it's very, very hard for you to learn how to team fight effectively since every 
team comp is different. Um, but you want to be looking for big things such as Rumble Ultimates, Malphite Ultimates, uh, GP Ultimates, that sort of stuff. Things that will really mess you up in team fights. Now this team, this game, we don't really struggle with any of that. We start winning, um, Diana's super strong, everyone's super strong, Ash is strong, I'm strong. It's just impossible for us to lose team fights. But for me personally, in these team fights, what I need to look out for is a pike pull or pike engage. Um, that's the biggest thing. Otherwise, I'm not really scared of Heimerdinger, GP, Olaf, or anybody else. And as soon as Pike's pull goes on cooldown, he's dead. You can see Heimerdinger doesn't do much to me as well. He has a stun, but he doesn't he doesn't put me out of place too bad. And he's not too hard to stop. GP ultimate is here, but it's not as strong either. I'm not too scared of that. And uh, I can pretty much run down their whole entire team. GP barrels are huge, actually. I do have to look out for GP barrels in team fights. But depending on the enemy champions, that's how you decipher how to team fight. Whether you want to group, or you want to flank and split push, or you want to split push in 1v1 or 1v2, it's totally different. This game we can all just group up and run it down if they truly wanted to end it. Now how do you close out games? Closing out games, there's a few ways you can do it. You can get Baron and push an end just like this. Split up and push different lanes, 1-4 or 131 or all five mid uh, there's a majority of ways we can end the game and you can also do elder dragon end. you can secure the elder dragon um, but before you can do before you the main way you close out a game is an effective team fight or an effective uh, 1v1 or 1v2 on this on the side lane while you're split pushing when it comes to closing a game on League of Legends, it's all about your win condition. How can you figure out what your win condition is? Do you win by split pushing and taking objectives? Or do you win by team fighting? Or do you win by flanking the enemy? Or do you win by targeting a certain champion? Or do you win by simply dodging an important ultimate like a Malphite or Rumble ultimate? Anyways, that's going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and if you enjoyed it, feel free to check out all my other videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below what you thought of the video. Let me know. If there's anything you'd, else you'd like to know, feel free to ask me in the comment section below, and we'll get it answered. Have a good day.